this is the fish that we're looking for. A 3,000 ton steel fish. A submarine able to remain submerged for months at a time. Silent, elusive, trying to sneak by our lookouts up above. If we detect this submarine, we must be able to classify it as a valid contact. And we must then be able to track it through evasive maneuvers. This is no false echo, no school of fish. Here's positive classification of this sonar contact. It's a SCAT. SCAT contact bearing 250, range 4,500 yards. is a simple, self-contained, low-cost mechanical device designed to provide classification of sonar contacts and to increase sonar's capability for tracking such contacts. SCAT consists of a magnet with a normal pull of well over 100 pounds and an oscillating vibrator tube which is attached to the magnet with a pivot arm. The vibrator tube is stowed inside a tail fairing which attaches to the magnet by means of a release pin. When dropped on a submerged submarine, the scat magnet attaches to the hull or superstructure and a flow of water of less than one knot is all that's needed to start the vibrator tube hammering out acoustic signals. Scat signals have been received at ranges that have consistently been twice that possible with active sonar. SCAT is a product of original and creative thinking by the men of Aeronutronic Division of Ford Motor Company. The story of SCAT begins in 1959, when Aeronutronic engineers met with ASW specialists of the Naval Ordnance Test Station at Pasadena, California, to discuss anti-submarine warfare problems. This meeting at Knott's was brought about because of Aeronutronics' interest in working with the Navy to develop the systems the Navy must have to maintain an ASW capability of the highest level. The detection of submerged enemy submarines was then and is now the most critical area in anti-submarine warfare. Sonar provides our most available and most widely used means for submarine detection. But sonar contacts often turn out to be anything but submarines. The Navy's number one requirement is for a means of more accurately and more positively classifying and identifying sonar contacts. This was the problem. Discussion at Aeronutronic brought out ideas could a device be made that would immediately identify a sonar contact as a submarine? And if this could be done, why not use the device's identifying signal to track the sub through evasive action? Answers to these questions took the form of experimental designs. And from these designs came experimental models. Immediately, the SCAT idea was presented to the Naval Ordnance Test Station. Knotts suggested that Mine Force Pacific, Destroyer Development Group Pacific, and appropriate high-level Navy Department personnel be contacted. The response was immediate. Did Aeronutronic have more experimental models? They did. Would the Navy help try out the idea? They would.
program of feasibility testing for the experimental SCAT device was started immediately. Aeronutronic provided engineers and experimental SCAT units. Destroyer Development Group, Pacific Fleet, Mine Force Pacific, and Submarine Flotilla 1 Pacific provided the ships and men to carry out the test exercises. For the SCAT program, the date is September 30th, 1959. Time approximately 12.20. Dobson speaking, 7.10 a.m. This is the first run, depth five, six feet, speed nine knots. Sona, uh, sound maker coming through quite clearly. In four weeks, Aeronutronic, working together with the U.S. Navy operating forces, demonstrated that the SCAT idea did work. It was feasible to use SCAT to classify and track submerged submarines. Aeronutronic then presented a proposal to the Office of the Chief of Naval Operations, outlining a detailed SCAT research and development program. The proposal was favorably received, and shortly thereafter, Aeronutronic was awarded a contract by the Bureau of Naval Weapons. Work was begun in July of 1960. The basic objectives of the SCAT development program were to produce a mechanical device capable of attaching to a submerged submarine, capable of generating an acoustic signal that could be monitored by standard Navy sonar equipment, and compatible for delivery by the Navy's 7.2-inch, a head-thrown weapon, the Hedgehog, achieving the same sink rate as the standard Hedgehog. In achieving these objectives, aeronutronic engineers were to work closely with engineering personnel of the Naval Ordnance Test Station. Knotts would provide technical direction for the Navy throughout the research and development program. One of the first problems to be attacked was that of improving the sink rate of the experimental SCAT. To be most effective against the latest deep diving subs, SCAT had to get down deep, fast. Streamlining the experimental SCAT solved the sink rate problem. But how could the SCAT vibrator tube be carried in this new configuration? Using a flexible wire for linking the magnet and vibrator might do the job. But tests run at the California Institute of Technology's water channel showed that vibrator action with this linkage was unsatisfactory. Within hours, a new design had been worked out. The vibrator tube could be folded on a hinged, rigid link and then stowed inside the streamlined tail fairing spring loading of the tube link pivot point completed the basic SCAT design. Now two simultaneous design efforts were begun. One for the tail fairing, the other for the vibrator tube. Among many materials considered for the tail fairing, plastic appeared to be ideal. It was easy to form and low in cost. But it wasn't strong enough to stand up under water impact. Aluminum tubing provided the required strength, and it was also easy to fabricate and low in cost. Studies of vibrator tube action were carried out early in the program at the Navy's David W. Taylor model basin. Data from these tests was reduced by the Naval Ordnance Test Station and studied by Knotts and Aeronutronic SCAT project engineers. Performance of the experimental model vibrator tube at low speeds was not good. Using this model basin test data, a number of new vibrator tube configurations were designed and fabricated, and a program of extensive testing of these new designs was carried out at Aeronutronics Water Channel. Consistent operation of the vibrator tube at extremely low speeds was an important design requirement since the SCATs must operate effectively when attached to a submarine that may be moving at speeds of less than one knot. This sealed hollow aluminum tube consistently operated at speeds as low as three quarters of one knot. 
its lightweight and relatively large diameter, combined with a density nearly equal to water, resulted in excellent vibrator performance with little or no loss in signal output. While the design of the SCAT units was progressing from early experimental model through improved prototype, work was simultaneously moving forward on the Hedgehog delivery system. Water impact tests of the SCAT Hedgehog launcher assembly were carried out at the Navy's Morris Dam test facility. Cost effectiveness and dispersion pattern studies indicate that four SCATs per Hedgehog will provide the maximum hit expectancy per unit of lowest cost. The center post of the Hedgehog launcher head is slotted, and the four scats are attached over these slots with the scat magnets serving as keepers. The addition of a frangible cover provides aerodynamic stability and also protects the scats from corrosion during storage aboard ship. At Morris Dam, the Hedgehog launcher with scats attached was tested at velocities and trajectories which matched actual Hedgehog water impact conditions. The frangible cover breaks up at water impact and impact also forces the scats away from the Hedgehog, dispersing them in a roughly circular pattern. By the first week in February 1961, barely seven months from program inception, the SCAT Hedgehog delivery system was ready for final proof testing. Ten powered launch tests of the prototype SCAT Hedgehog assembly were carried out at the Navy San Clemente Island test facility. These tests were completely successful. The SCAT Hedgehog exhibited no in-flight instability. The frangible covers fragmented on water impact with no apparent difficulties. Navy divers took measurements of scat dispersion patterns following each test firing. These patterns closely corresponded to design predictions. While scat development testing and analysis were proceeding at San Clemente Island, at Morris Dam, at Knott's Pasadena, and at Aeronutronic, a concurrent program of operational development testing was being conducted at sea with the assistance of the Navy's operating forces. This development assist testing provided continuing support to the SCAT development engineering effort. Sonar ranging and tracking, oscillator tube frequency, magnet attachment. All areas of SCAT design were tested at sea simultaneously with the land-based R&D program. Aeronutronic and Knott's engineers often talked out design refinements and modifications together with Navy personnel on the deck of a destroyer or in the control room of a submarine. Early in the program, when Hedgehog modifications were still in the design stage, Navy helicopters were used to drop scats on a submerged submarine. Scats were carried in this simple launching rack. Several runs resulted in 100% hits and an overall average of better than 70% was achieved. The last series of development assist tests was conducted at Key West, Florida, 6 through 8 March, 1961. The Navy's Key West Test and Evaluation Detachment furnished technical assistance and coordinated the fleet services provided for the test. This was the sequence of events during a typical launching run. The target submarine, USS Threadfin, submerged to a keel depth of 110 feet and then proceeded on a steady course at a speed of seven knots. The firing destroyer, the USS Softly, tracked Threadfin with its SQS-29 sonar and took intercept course with an attack speed of 12 knots. At a range of approximately 300 yards, softly fired a salvo of six hedgehogs. Three from the starboard launcher, three from port. Upon receipt of the softly's firing signal, Threadfin released a marker smoke bomb. Softly and two other destroyers, the USS Wadley and the USS Forest Royal, 
all listened with sonar for scat signals. If signals were heard, the destroyers opened the range until scat signal contact was lost. Threadfin then surfaced, and a search of the decks and superstructure was made. Scats were photographed in their attached position on the Threadfin's hull and were then recovered. The Key West Development Assist testing marked the successful completion of the initial SCAT development program. SCAT has achieved its program objectives. To be delivered by a hedgehog, to attach to a moving submerged submarine, and to produce signals that can be tracked by standard Navy sonar equipment. The successful attainment of these initial development program objectives in just nine months is a direct result of the excellent cooperation between the SCAT project staffs of Aeronutronic and the Naval Ordnance Test Station and the Navy operating forces participating in the development program. This same enthusiastic team effort is now needed to bring SCAT out of the initial development phase through final development and into active production for delivery to the Navy's ASW forces. The initial efforts in this direction are already underway. Production engineering and value engineering studies have been initiated by Aeronutronic. These studies indicate that SCAT can be mass produced at marked savings over costs of models used during the initial development program. A wide range of SCAT operational use studies have been undertaken by the Navy's operating forces. These studies indicate that a number of SCAT delivery systems can be profitably utilized. The feasibility of using helicopters has already been successfully demonstrated. The DASH system can provide an excellent means of guiding SCAT carrying helicopters to their targets. The Navy's ASW patrol planes can carry more SCATs faster and farther than helicopters. No matter what delivery system is used, SCAT can be equally effective in a hot war or a cold war situation. SCAT can also perform a valuable role in training hunter-killer crews. SCAT will do all these varied jobs with high reliability because of its simplicity of design which requires no maintenance and no checkout. If the United States Navy's hunter-killer groups are to most effectively counter the threat of enemy submarines, they must have the most effective ASW weapons available. Demonstrated effectiveness, combined with simplicity and low cost, makes SCAT a logical and valuable addition to the Navy's hunter-killer arsenal.